Big Wave Challenge continues here. It is the Nazare Challenge. We're into the semi-finals here late morning in Portugal. If you're just joining us, it is the World Surf League's Big Wave Tour. And here is your six-pack about to do battle in 20-foot peaks here at Nazare. It's a late morning. It's Gixilias alongside former world champ Peter Mel. Pete, an interesting draw here. Some big names and some new talent emerging with names like Russell Bierke. On the tour. Yeah, how exciting it is. We get semi-final number one underway, João de Macheda, the Portuguese talent who has done a lot of time over in Mavericks in California, shares homes between San Francisco and here in Portugal, gets a quick early start here. Welcome to semi-final number one of the Nazaré Challenge. Uh, his boards are amazing. You know, is this uh, replay here of João de Macheda, who, again, you talked about the fact that he is uh, very accomplished. He's actually been competing on the big wave tour since its inception you know he was able to get his starts here and there but his uh, highlight for me was the very first year when he made the final here uh, in some crazy uh, Nazare conditions and again right now I, um, from what I understand he's got a bit of an injured knee but you know if uh, you're making your waves you're not getting any injuries so draw up to his old tricks and this is a very very tough heat up for our surfer in green meanwhile there's that familiar figure back in the Black this time, Ian Walsh saw him dominating his round one encounter earlier this morning, getting rumbled on by a big piece of white water here. Well, you know, you think about, uh, you know, this semifinal, how important it is. It is key. Look at this drop here, late, straight up vertical. The board, that was a, an amazing drop. I mean, his board was straight up 90 degrees and he made it. The board, obviously, he's talked about Chris Christensen, his shaper, who shapes Greg Long's board, shapes a lot of the competitors on the Big Wave Tour, but uh, and a very accomplished shaper and a very good craftsman. And of course, Ian Walsh, another wave for him. And look at that negotiating. You talked about the tide moving out. Actually, Garrett had mentioned that when the tide starts to move out, you're going to get the rips, which are the, the water moving out, uh, pulling out, and it creates some bumps in the lineup. You know, the high tide tends to be a little bit smoother on the face, but, you know, you see that the the waves is going to get steeper with the shallower water that's that lower tide but you also have to be able to negotiate seven point rod pete having uh, a look at this one this is lucas chianka waiting for the score and so lucas uh he's competing here he knows that uh he likes to get that quick early start he's surfing closest to the cliff line he is at that number one peak that's where he feels the most comfortable and look at him going for maneuvers like literally hitting the lip on a 10-foot surfboard that's the type of style that he's going to bring and approach well, during the replays pete nathan florence finds himself a big steep peak of his own well, we saw the round one action, and uh, the three surfers that were on point were able to get through this one. So this is a very difficult heat. As you watch, having a look there was Billy Kemper, a good buddy of Nathan Florence, but Nathan in better position for the right. So he picks up his first wave, and you, you want to pick up a wave pretty much in the very first 10 minutes because uh, you start waiting too long. Billy Kemper, current big wave champion, looks for the pocket. Uh-oh. Look at that barrel on the inside. Just a section that wouldn't allow Kemper to set the rail there, Pete. Now that and the fact that he was trying to kick out and get underneath so he didn't get sucked over, but he was too high, not enough speed, and he did go over the falls there. Even more buoyant. And here's Billy Kemper. You know, see that low center of gravity, that wave too quick to get out in front of it, but a beautiful drop. You see how low he gets to the, to the wall? That's great technique from Billy, but he's trying to get out the back by kicking out the back. Yeah, and it makes you, it allows you to take less risk, right? Because you're not going to take away. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> João de Maceda, the Portuguese, will go over the handlebars, so to speak, and take a wipeout as we move uh, further down the clock here. How quick he came up. Billy Kemper over the ledge here at Nazare to post another wave. This is wave number two for Billy Kemper. Judge is still working on an opening score for him. Sets the rail. Big wave champ at work here in the semi-finals. Negotiating what is a complex inside bowl. There's that movement. You see it going left to right across screen again. That's the reverb off the uh, the cliffs. That energy moving off, you know, off the water, which is uh, important. Same with Billy Kemper, another surfer who puts in a ton of time uh, off season, but also, uh, you know, doing that cross training where he puts in so much time getting his body uh, to the top of the canyon and that is a big drop underway Nathan Florence will peg a big one here just a little touch of the rail for Nathan keeps the center of gravity low he will bank a nice score to add to his opener wow that's uh, exactly what you know right yep. now at this at this point in the event uh, you know you know you've you've seen what scored all the way through round one
and there's so many opportunities that everybody's going to get their chances, you know, and uh, look at that, just grabbing the rail. Uh, he has got an amazing ocean awareness. He understands where you need to be to catch these waves. You know, he puts in the extra effort with all of the training that he does. Yeah, you take a look here. This was during the replays of Russell Bjerke, his first wave. So now he's getting in the mix. I was just chatting to his dad, Kirk Bjerke, who's on, on site. You know, he talks about the fact that uh, he was out there uh, riding big waves for the, you know, the pure pleasure and adrenaline. Oh, deep and steep oh, up for my. Lucas Chianka. The defending event champion in the semifinals is on fire. This young Brazilian has got the Midas touch here. He's done something special here. He's pulled into the first real barrel of the event here, Pete. That was awesome. And that's his experience here. He touched on the fact that when you surf this wave, even when it's just mediocre, small conditions at six feet, it translates from that same size all the way to being a, a 20 foot. It, it looks very similar. So if you can experience this wave, look at that, just behind wow. it. Wow. I mean, that is unbelievable positioning, unbelievable control, the intensity of the wave, reading it perfectly. He puts himself in a very, very tough uh, position in the lineup because in order to catch that wave, he's putting himself in major danger to get rewarded like that. Russell Bierke back in action as we follow the live here at Nazare. The young 21-year-old Australian. Wave number two for Bierke. Saw him get going. Judges still bringing us scores. I mean, so it's competition's fierce here. So, so much so. I mean, you've got all six surfers in the lineup and you've got Russell and Billy both needing uh they they don't have any scores in their score line right now so that's you know on the top of your screen is not a actually how what's happening you know there's a, yeah. there's at least four or five scores need to drop take a look at russell's second wave he has a score to come in as well uh this one you know this drop wasn't exactly as steep as he would have liked so the, that'll take away from the score a little bit nice long ride you know and great control but he was a little bit out in front of it a bit and yes Zhao de Mercedes still inflated and he's going to have a go behind the curtain as well. So answering to Lucas Chianca, Xiao de Merceda, the Portuguese talent, is really now putting this heat into perspective. Is, uh, he does not care about taking some donuts. He's going to go right back out there. Behind it, sets it up. Not the biggest of waves, you know, in comparison to what we saw from Lucas Chianca, a little bit bigger section. And uh, it's, it's a perfect asset to uh, having, you know, professional surfing events. We see it on the championship tour as well as the QS as we got live action. Nathan Florence, just a little number to add there. Of course, opened with the 5.33, did Nathan? You know, there could be bigger uh, moments, but you, you know, you wanna see action. You wanna see fairness to it as well, you know, and uh, when you have it to a point where it's just out of control and they're all, or inconsistent, you also got a, a big wave, that big left that he has, that yep. hasn't scored yet. Russell Beer, keep back at it as well. So the action's coming thick and fast. And the point I wanted to add to that, Pete, is that consistency. We see, I mean, I remember the first heat of the morning. I think we must have had over 30 waves ridden. Uh, and this that. one's right there as well. Yep. Now we're seeing everybody, all six surfers, getting opportunities. Birke on this uh, right-hander. Just a quick one for him. I don't think that'll actually factor into his top two. Those steep drops. And that's, look at this one. I mean, this is going to be a good, uh, most likely an excellent number. And look how he sets this one up. He had a perfect read on it. He saw that it was going to move down the line and just oh. waited to get himself right in there in the most critical section. He actually had to deal with cycle helmet while training <laughs> on a stationary bike because he'd do that. He would hold his breath and ride his bike until he passed out. <laughs> As we watch the replay here, this is uh, Nathan Florence. on. This was the string of waves back to back to back. He's picked up another one. Is the semifinals, and this is Russell Bierke, the young 21-year-old Australian. Also going to the backhand here, so three massive left-handers in a row here in the lineup. Pete Mel, we're seeing some serious action here at semifinals, and it's heated up in that first peak because you get, uh, you know, the rocks into play, the cliff into play, but uh, perfect positioning here from Bjerke. You know, again, looking at waves that with this lower tide starting to pull out, you're going to get a bit more performance uh, types of waves that are going to be a little bit longer because they're moving further out. You know, you're always going to be in your head going, I need a score. Well, Nathan Florence showing commitment here and interest to this ball. To his feet goes the surfer from the North Shore. Nice little delay there. Beautiful, clean face to this. How's the little hand trim there? Ball, and he just centers himself. Florence down in fifth, looking for a 7.6.
inside of 10 minutes to go now. The competition will remain fierce for the back part of semi-final number one here. For 17 points being the low number, I mean, that's usually a, a, a good a position. Clear a good, yeah, at least a, a clear advance. Yes, exactly. And that just goes, shows to how good the surfers are, but also how good the conditions are, because everybody's getting great waves. This one here, if you look at Nathan Florence, that's going to be a very beautifully ridden wave. Discuss all of this. Live action continues. We spoke about the high rate of waves coming into the lineup here. It is non-stop. It is non-stop, and this is wonderful to see in the Big Wave Tour template. Look at oh, this. Look at this as we go down to seven and a Ooh. half to go. Ian Walsh has played the patience game. That's a late, deep drop. He'll come around the bowl inside part of the wave as well. See the energy moving in underneath. The convergence from the canyon now starts shaping the inside bowl for Ian Walsh. Like the drop wasn't quite as steep, but look at the size of this one here for Ian Walsh. Straight down the bottom, staying right next to the white water. That's that critical section. Great control there for Ian. Feels like to me that this will be into uh, his top two. He'll, he'll definitely better the five, which was that first big closeout section or a big closeout he took off in the very beginning of the heat. His best number is 6.1. Is it going to be the 7.69? That's the question that the judges are going to answer right now. Wow, steep. Such great control from Ian Walsh. He uh, has amazing experience on his equipment. He uh, knows exactly what his boards are going to do, so that helps mentally. You know? And I think that there's all, you know, you think about the things you can control. Uh, you know, you're not necessarily be able to control what the lineup's going to do. The man from Maui, more action with Billy Kemper. So back to back here with Walsh and Kemper. We've seen that healthy rivalry, not only at Jaws, but in the qualifying series events at Sunset Beach. What talents these guys, and there's such a hotbed coming out of Maui. Take a look here from the drone footage of uh, that wave from Billy Kemper. You know, again, he's got to get higher than a 5.37. Live action continues here, just coming up to the five minute mark in the heat. This is heat leader, Lucas Chianka, already establishing a 9.6 in the lineup. Of course, defending event champion, the young Brazilian. <laughs> Goes through a massive oh, impact there. That's the convergence of uh, the wedge effect. You know, it wedges together and it just uh, amplifies the energy. Driver, you, you love seeing that tap of the head. Replay of this last one here. In order to improve, he has to better a 6.43. You know, and he loves looking for maneuvers. He was ready to hit the lip there, but decides against it, which I think is very smart, especially since you've got the 9.6. He's confident that he's going to be able to get through this heat and save some energy for that final. And uh, like I said, Lucas has uh, already produced some of the biggest numbers in this event and looking to repeat his win. 25.63 heat total for Lucas Chianka, the young Brazilian, in the red. As you watch uh, another, look at the positioning he has. See how low he is and the control he carries. He moves his great footwork, you know, keeping his stance super wide when he's trying to do maneuvers, you know, moving up and down the board to keep the board momentum down the line. Could be the end result as we go down to 20 seconds here in semi final number one. And you'll be thinking right now that Kemper and Walsh will be whispering to each other, let's hope this is a bronze coefficient event. You would have to say so. I mean, those uh, those two right there specifically are going to be the guys to beat when you head to Jaws. Um, also very experienced at places like Mavericks. Yep. You know, that position of uh, a semifinal is is good enough to, to keep you in the mix. But uh, the final was really what you needed to be at. So it looks like with the, this heat over, three great surfers into the final. Yep. So the three Hawaiians will fall out the draw here in semi-final number one.